Longtime collaborators whose work together includes Safe and Far From Heaven with director Todd Haynes and Savage Grace with Tom Kalin, Killer Films co-founder and producer Christine Vichon, and actress Julianne Moore discuss lesbian representation, homophobia in Hollywood, and the state of queer cinema. What do you think the criteria is for Hollywood to get behind a gay story? I think Todd Haynes said something once, which I've always quoted, which is somebody asked him if Hollywood was homophobic. Right. And he said, well, it might be, but who cares? Money isn't. <laughs> and, that's great. And that's the truth. It's so I mean, true. You know, I think it's the same thing. We'll get Hollywood to get behind a gay story. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Milk, you know? I know. Yeah. I mean, Milk is a terrific script, um, a terrific director, mm -hmm. uh, and those two things are pretty much all you need to get a terrific cast, which it got. Well, does queer cinema still exist? Because I think, I feel like there was this sort of period where it was like, queer cinema, queer cinema. And I'm like, uh huh? I mean, I don't feel well, like... I think a couple things. I think that it's important to remember that in the early 90s when that phrase was coined, mm -hmm. and it was kind of coined around... I think that Sundance in particular, where there was Swoon, an extraordinary film by Christopher Munch called The Hours and the Times, and The Living End, Greg Araki's movie. Yeah. And, um, and then Poison had been the year before. And I think kind of the, a couple things. One is what we have to remember about the early 90s was AIDS. And yes. The sense of urgency that it inspired in a lot of, you know, uh, gay yeah. or queer or whatever you want to call them, filmmakers, right. and a sense that, you know, they, that time was running out and yeah. that they had to they had to tell their stories, and a sense that, you know, they weren't if they didn't tell their stories, nobody would. Right. Exactly. And um, and also at that time, and even with something like Go Fish, which is much more lighthearted. Such a charming. I absolutely. love that movie. And but even with Go Fish, there was no. I mean. Putting that out in the marketplace, I think people are going to go see this movie because it's basically about looking for love. And it mm -hmm. doesn't matter, you know, and that was absolutely true. But people are also going to go see that movie because if you were a gay woman, there was nothing else for you to see right. where you got to see yourself up on screen. Right. Now, I think if we released Go Fish today, um, I don't think anybody, I, well, I don't think we'd be able to release it today. Really? Well... <clears throat> Because I think that now people have other choices. Yeah. You know, they can watch... Um, the L word. The L word. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. All those beautiful um, lesbians. On yeah, the all those, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what my life is like. <laughs> and um, Mine too. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, I mean, but also I think there's just much more choice. I mean, right. there's just, you know, there's, there's television shows, there's main... I mean, and also then... You know, the notion of, of gay film festivals was a way of bringing a community together that had no other way to gather. Right. And honestly now, with the internet and DVDs, it just doesn't feel as... Urgent? I mean, it just doesn't. Yeah. So I don't know. I, don't, I, I guess the, you know, the idea of... There's the idea of what makes a movie gay or not gay, mm -hmm. and then there's the idea of, like, is there still really... You know, the, does the notion of a sort of queer cultural cinema exist? Exist. Well, you know, I'm asked that question uh, occasionally too because of my work with these so-called queer right. cinema right. directors and stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I, I said, I, I feel like it's sometimes I feel like it's reductive, right? Because you're you're sort of you know you're putting yourself in this little tiny box. When I think when these films that I've made, I, I feel are about. Humanity. It's about what it right. is to be alive and to love somebody or to be ostracized or any of those kinds of things. So for me, it's always, it's very, very much about all of us. Right. You know, the queer slash gay community has never actually ever embraced the work I've done at the time that I've done it. Interesting. Except for Boys Don't Cry. That one, ever, I, got, that, I got a free pass on that. that really? Was, yeah. um, but, uh, but safe... I was criticized for not really addressing the AIDS crisis, you know. Oh come on! And um, and then Swoon was criticized for being. There was this whole outcry at that time about the whole idea of negative images. Mm -hmm. That oh oh oh, because they're, they're murderers, so you shouldn't have it. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. And there was around. And then remember, there's the boycott of Basic Instinct. 
because <laughs> Sharon Stone, Sharon Stone's murdering character was a lesbian. Oh, Although, yeah. you know, I, I was a little like, I don't know, you know, she's beautiful. She she's murders rich, awful men. That's and right, yeah. So you could a positive say image for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then Go Fish was criticized. Because then I thought, oh, they can't get mad at me about this. Yeah, sweet little, Come on. You know, girls holding it's hands kind ageist. of movie. Ageist. Yeah, not okay. having, you know, nobody in it was like over 22. You're all just adorable young right. things. So, Julie. Yes, Christine. <laughs> yes. You, you have <laughs> remained committed to doing uh, sm smaller movies. Mm -hmm. You don't seem like you're afraid of first-time directors. Not in the least. And um, but and that's really unusual. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but you still also do, you know, you still do some of those money makers too. You bet, you bet <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know, an interesting thing has happened actually. When I, when I first started doing, when I was, when, early in my career, <laughs> when I, when I was kind of doing both, they, there weren't a lot of people doing both. Right. It was sort of, it was sort of like you right. had to choose one or the other. Right. And I always did it, it was purely practical for me because, you know, when I, when you do an independent, I would choose an independent film that I wanted to do and you don't get paid. Right. So I didn't get paid, so I would say, well, I want to, I, I want to get paid, so I would do something where, um, where I'd be able to, you know, make a mortgage payment or something. Right. But what has happened that's very interesting is now because financing for independent film has changed so dramatically, it's no longer this idea that you can make a movie for, we say, made SAFE for just under a million dollars. That is correct. And there was no expectation that SAFE would make money. The right. idea in the early days was you were just going to make back what you, right. uh, you know, had paid. And that was okay. Now what has happened is because people are so reluctant to finance independent film at all because they feel like, you know, how, how is this going to ever, right. ever be uh, um, uh, effective? They depend on actors oh, yeah. who have some box office, right. particularly foreign box office. So my doing these 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 bigger Hollywood movies has actually kept my career alive in independent film. Right. Because that means not right. only do I want to do something, but they go, oh, you know what? Julie is worth a la la overseas. Right. Right. And I could finance a film. And I don't think there's any danger now. I mean, I think when I first started making movies, there was that thing of like straight actors didn't like to play gay. Really? That really was, actually, I think what was more likely was gay actors didn't like to play right. gay. Right, cause because it was so hard for they them. were so anxious that. But don't you think also? I mean, I think it's really interesting. I mean, because we both have children around the same age. I, I feel like our, our, the, the world has changed so much, and our attitudes for sexuality have changed so much. And and it's, our kids are growing up in a world where lots of people in their class have two mommies mm -hmm. or two daddies. And where my children will say, when we play the game of life, they say, "Do you want to be married to a girl or a boy?" Right. Routinely, because they they know that you can be married to either. Right. So I think that's well, actually you in, can't be married. Well, Oh, I know. But anyway. But I know, on, but yes, you know so what I mean? Yes. They think. Right. I mean, we're sort of working that attitude toward right. that, you know, that in some places and blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. But um, what would it take for Hollywood to uh, produce a movie with a lesbian protagonist? I really have to believe, and this may simply just be the only way I can do what I do, I really do believe that great material finds its way somehow to the top yeah. and it somehow gets made. Now... There's been, you know, there's certainly been uh, movies that I've spent, as you well know, a very long time trying to make. Mm -hmm. But I, I do believe that, like, great material will attract great actors and will somehow, and I, you know what I mean, for the, you know, it's not like Savage Grace made $20 million, nope. but I know that that movie's going to be around and people yeah. are going to continue to talk about it. Yeah. And that it's going to be something eventually that we'll all be very proud to have in our in the long body of work. That's right. That yeah. They'll list, yeah. you know, when we're getting our Irving, when I'm getting my Irving Thalberg, and you're <laughs> getting your. I'll, I'll present it you to know. you. Exactly. That's right.